Hello! Welcome back! Glad to see you! Um, now I know this looks a little weird, this looks a little suspicious, full on, what the hell, my guy? You went ahead and just, like, jumped in without us? I promise you, I swear, as soon as I hit load game, it just threw me in right here. You didn't miss anything. I didn't even, I didn't even change my channel yet. That's how, that's how you know, alright? That's how, that's how you know that this is true. Well, alright, I guess that's not entirely true. You missed the little beep boop as the text came in. I apologize if, uh, if, if you were really looking forward to that. Um, I can't make that up to you. Uh, oh, you could technically stop the recording right now, 30 seconds in and redo it. No, and we're, we're too late. We're too, we're too far in. How are you guys doing today? I hope you're doing well. I'm doing pretty well. I can't complain about anything. It's a, it's a lovely evening right now. Um, late afternoon, early evening-ish. Depends on your perception of time. But anyway, let's just dive right in. Uh, we didn't go back to our apartment, which is why we're waking up right here, in case, I don't know, somehow you, you forgot, or maybe you, you didn't watch the last episode. You just decided this is the one you're going to dive into. In which case, welcome. I'm glad to have you here. Rise and shine. <sighs> Morning. It's 11 a.m. though. It's morning for me on the weekends. And any other day. How's everything outside? Still noisy, but forces have been deployed to take care of most of them at least. How so? Zabatsu Corps' president is pleading with anyone to stop the rogue white knights. Neighboring city forces were deployed quickly and have subdued most of the opposition. There've also been reports of white knights just freezing. Like they were petrified somehow. Make it sound like some god suddenly decided to put everything in place. Well, I'm just glad no bullets are flying in and out of the whole building. Sure, there's still some bad apples out and it's not really safe yet, but it was worse last night. There also seems to be a civilian force lynching any white knight they spot. So not only are the white knights a problem, regular folks are on edge too. I wonder if Say is okay. Should we be worried about Gil? That kid knows how to take care of himself. I'm sure that whatever it is that he's doing, he's safe. Dare I say even safer where he is than here. I sure hope so. Are we gonna work today? Ah, things are too nasty right now. Let's take the Sunday off. Oh, uh, all right. Say, do you want me to help you get to your apartment? Actually, yeah, I'd appreciate that. Okay then, let me lock things up and we'll go. We'll grab something for lunch on the way. Sounds good. Oh, what the fuck? You can't just, you can't just blast me with this. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on, we can't have a, a wild transit. Well, we're in a new game! We're how many hours into this game? Like five, six hours in? And suddenly now you're throwing this transition? I love the ticker tape. Cyberpunk bartending action, I love this. This is great. And here we are. Home sweet home. Thanks a lot. Hey boss, wanna hang out for a bit? Hmm? Yeah, grab a beer, chill out for a bit, mostly to thank you for helping me. Well, I don't have much to do anyway, so sure, yeah. I did tell you you should invite me to your apartment sometime, didn't I? Oh, yeah, you did. What worries me a bit is that beer always leads to something else. To more beer? I also love how beer is always capitalized. It's like a brand. It's not, not like a generic thing, the, the beer brand. <laughs> I was gonna say to one of us going through the Spanish announcer's table. But I think we're safe here. Come on in then. Excuse me. Want one? Oh, yo, yo, we got the, this is, this is crazy, man. I'm, I'm still shook. We got, we got the, the screen here showing off our SIGs. What brand is this? What is even this logo? I don't even know what I'm looking at. Sorry, I don't smoke. Don't mind me though, smoke if you wanna. Thanks. Say, how's the chilly weather treating you? It gets cold from time to time, but nothing, nothing the Kotatsu and the heater can't fix. Oh, right, boss. You're not very good with the cold, are you? 
You know it. You didn't bring your jacket here either. Yeah, I left it at home when going to the bar yesterday. It wasn't that cold and I didn't expect to spend the night at the bar. Would you like a sweater or something? Oh, don't mind me. I insist. I have this hoodie from some time ago. It's too big for me. Why buy it then? It was dirt cheap. True. All right, look. It, and that's the thing, right? If you're gonna buy clothes on discount, right? Which, like, I, 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 guilty. I'll raise my hand. I'm guilty to this. I buy my clothes very cheap. Okay. But if you're going at, like, the thrift store or something, you know, if there's a good deal, at least get something too large, right? Not something too small. And it's, especially with, like, a hoodie. If your hoodie's too big, no one's gonna bat an eye, you know? They're just gonna be like, you like that nice... Sometimes it's kind of nice to wear, like, a big, comfy jacket. You feel me? Right. Wait. Where did you get this one? Don't know. Some flea market ages ago. Why? Nothing. It's just like one I had many years ago. What happened to it? Too much use. It just... Ripped? I see. You can keep it if you want. I never use it anyway. Um... We'll see. Come to think of it, how old are you, boss? I'm eternally 17! That's... that's terrifying. Fair enough. 17 plus how much? 17 plus, I'd have to cut your tongue if you knew. Alright. <laughs> Let me go change into something more comfortable. Take your time. Oh, fuck! The stare down! Foray is not pleased with this intruder into his domain. You have to pay the fucking toll. You have to offer a gift to the king of this home. How dare you? Say, Jill, there's a blue-eyed mass of black fleur- Black fleur? Black fur glaring in my general direction. Hmm? Oh, that's just Foray. He's just wary of any new visitors. Cats will be cats, I guess. He'll warm up quickly, though. Just give him time. He's unusual looking. Blue eyes on a black cat? They usually have green. Yeah, weird, huh? At first I thought they were like that because he was small, but they never changed. Do you have any pets, boss? Back at home we had a bear. <laughs> of course. Back at home, we had a bear, you know. Ah, I see. What? Ah, good old Bosco. He kept intruders away better than any dog. I'm sure he did. I'm sure as fuck he did. I'm not a criminal, right? But if I had to, you know, if I had to make a living by breaking into houses, and it's like, oh, do I want to go to, you know, the, the house down the road here who's got a fucking chihuahua? As the guard dog, or do I want to hit the one with the grizzly bear? I'm hitting the chihuahua house. Like, let's be real. R right. Hmm? This picture here isn't something you see every day. Oh, this is cute. This is a cute photo. What? Me taking such a sappy pic? No, a framed picture on printed paper. It's so... vintage. Who are these? That's... Um, the one on the right is Lenore, my ex-girlfriend. The one on the left is Gabrielle, her sister. Yeah, Gab Gabrielle? Gabrielle? Gabriella? Gabri- uh, Gabby? It's Gabby? <laughs> I don't- I've never actually called a Gabby by their full name. I've only known that many Gabbies, just make it seem like I know a ton. I don't, but they always go by Gabby. Like two, I know. <laughs> they, they always go. I speak with authority on things that I have no, uh, no real knowledge about. You shouldn't be a surprise. Huh? Is this pic recent or? Actually, that one's from three to four years ago. <laughs> you look exactly the same. I'm only 27. What'd you expect? That's why they say kids are the ones that get old. I thought it was recent, because you don't usually see people displaying pictures of their exes so openly. Let alone a printed and framed one. 
Did you two break up on good terms then? You even hesitated a bit when calling her your ex. <sighs> Let's just say that everything ended with both of us saying mean things. And me storming out of her house, breaking a couple of things on the way out. We never broke up formally, and I guess I still have feelings for her. I, I just went away. Haven't said a word since. Really? It's hard to picture you doing such a thing. And you look so happy in the pic. Why have her pick out like this then? I just couldn't get my mind off something that Alma said to me. About missing having the warmth of someone else pressed against your side. Using them as a pillow, mixing your perfume with theirs. Putting your head in their chest, listening to their breathing as they pet your head. Dozing off knowing they're there, watching you, protecting you. I don't know, it just felt nostalgic and miserable. I'll just put this away. I've been meaning to apologize, but I feel like it's too late now. Whenever I go out, there's this fear in the back of my head that I'll meet her in the street. I just don't know if I could face her again, let alone talk to her. I'd be a mess. It's never too late to apologize, Jill. Maybe. Hmm? What's this on the table? Looks like an on- It's nothing, nothing! Now, please give that to me. Lope. All right. I saw nothing, don't worry. Anyway, let's grab some beers. Guide me. Yo, what is this? Yo, it's like we got a balcony on our apartment. That's pretty sick. That's pretty cool, man. Wait, beer so far, cans left. Oh, drink. Oh, how could I miss the big drink button? Hit me. Oh, okay, so we. All right, all right, let's do some quick maths. Every sip. Oh, hold on. I'm not a big beer drinker. But is one sip of beer a fucking fifth of it? You're telling me the average person is gonna drink a beer in five sips? That's insane to me. Maybe I'm just a little bitch, I don't know, but like, that's crazy. Also, Shine Spark out on the, the 15th of last month? How old is this? It's December when this takes place, right? Damn, you have lots of beer. Well, the BTC gives me discounts and a point card I can use every time I buy their alcohol. But this, beer is actually the cheapest drink I can get, Jesus. Is there any difference between the drinks at the bar and these? The drinks at the bar are more addictive, flavorful, and also stronger than the ones they sell in stores. And besides, the ones in the bar is more of a, or the one in the bar is more of a double IPA. This is more of a pilsner. I, I don't know what any of these words mean. I've heard of IPAs. I've had them. Um, I couldn't, if you put two beers in front of me and said one of them's a double IPA and one's a pilsner, which is which, I would not be able to tell you. There, there'd be no chance. I, I bet I could taste the difference, but if you were like, which one is which, no fucking chance. Negative chance. In English, please. Dana, you run a bar. You should know these things. I'm a fucking loser. I don't drink. I don't run a bar. I don't know these. You should know these. You own a bar. What is this? This one's lighter in color and lighter in flavor. No, no, it doesn't taste like a lighter to me. <laughs> fucking dork. <sighs> this one made with that... What was the name of the base liquid you use at the bar again? <laughs> oh god, here we go. Nutriogenic dich dichromethyl li lidogenol or NDL. Nut nutriogenic dichrometrical lidogenial or NDL. You can take a fucking drink after that, dude. It was a supplement or something, right? It was an experimental fluid they created to replace water when the Maiden Kiss polluted water supply. What the fuck is the Maiden Kiss? You can't just throw this lore at me, like... 
I have so many questions. When the maiden kiss hit, you know, duh. The effects of pollution turned out to be temporary, so NDL never went into mass production. But the BTC still commissioned it for use in bars. And this one's made with it? Let's see. Yep, here it is, near the end. NDL and cornstarch. Of course, there's fucking cornstarch and everything. Cornstarch? It serves as a stabilizer, if I remember correctly. They need it for packaged drinks. I see. I just realized something. What? You're a nerd, Jill. <laughs> Get donked on. Guilty as charged. We drink to that. Oh, and then it turns into open when we're out. I still have that bottle of rum somewhere around. Do you want some of it? Will you have some too? Not really, no. Then leave it like that. I'm not letting you drink beer alone. That's not how drinking with friends works. Do you consider me a friend then, boss? Why wouldn't I? Don't know. What with me, what with being my boss and all? I was never too sure. Well, in case you had any doubts, yes, I consider you one of my best friends. Besides, you and Gil are always so diligent and responsible that I'm the boss in name only anyway. <laughs> That's good to know. On a side note, it surprises me you kept that poster of me in the room. Oh, fuck, we're getting called out on the best boss poster. Oh, no, don't let her see our lock screen. And even more that you hung it in plain sight. When I gave it to you, it was more or less a joke, you know? Oh, we gotta crack one open for that. <laughs> take, a, take a sip. Yikes. Does it make you uncomfortable? If it doesn't make you uncomfortable, why would it make me uncomfortable? It's my own face! I'm still wondering why you did it, though. Aside from filling an empty spot on the wall, I don't really know. I thought it was funny, too. I guess it's like if someone gave you... I don't know... A dildo-shaped trophy or something, and you had it there as a conversation starter. Although no one comes here anyway, so it's kind of pointless. What? No steamy nights of passion? Oh, we take a drink to that. Yeah, no steamy no steamy nights of passion with the photo of our ex on our bedside table that we look over at in melancholy. <laughs> hmm. Oh, who's that? Is that your sister? Oh. <laughs> not since a year ago, I think. I'd rather not talk about what happened then. Did someone hurt you? Because if they did, I can go dish out the pain. No, nothing of that sort. Different kind of mess. Uncomfortable mess. Uh, not being able to have sex for reasons mess. Glad to know you have my back, though. That's what friends are for. Wait, you talk about the poster and compare it to having a dildo-shaped trophy. Did you just call me dildo face? That's what friends are for. <laughs> hey, boss. Take a sip before this one. Be honest with me here. About what? Who's Gil, exactly? What do you mean? You know what I mean. Who the fuck is he? Oh yeah, that. Well, I have a couple of ideas. I know for certain that Gil was in the Hong Kong riots. And he took part in the anti-riot force before defecting. That should give me a clue as to who he is, but... But? So far, I've only found out about one such defector, and he didn't leave Hong Kong for at least four years. I also know for certain that Gil was in England and France during that time frame. And it's always like that. When I think I have a clue as to who he is... Something else comes up that contradicts the evidence. Yeah, it's almost like he probably has planted this evidence to make it difficult to pin him down in case he's done something that, you know, he doesn't want to be found out for. Who could say? Guy's troublesome. A bit, yeah. <sighs> I wonder if Gil's all right. You worried about him? You make it sound like I'm some emotionless robot. You can be hard to read. I wouldn't worry about Gil so much, though. 
There's three things I know for certain about him. First, he can take care of himself. Second, you can sincerely trust him. And third, he absolutely hates bell pepper. He does? I've seen him even reject food that's been in contact with it. Man, what a baby. Unless he's allergic or something. He's not. Man, what a baby. How'd you meet such a guy? He showed up in the door of the bar. He... What? Well, it was truly after the whole incident with Robert and the levitation potion. You killed Robert. Let's be real, right? Robert didn't buy a levitation potion. You threw him off the top of the roof because he did something. Let's be real, right? Yeah, here we go. Right. Levitation potion. It was a slow day and he just showed up at the bar. I offered him a drink, but he said he didn't have any money on him. I couldn't leave him alone, so I pretty much gave the drinks for free. And after a couple, he broke down crying. He... Huh? I don't really know what he did, or I don't know what he did, but he was really, really regretting it. He wanted a second chance or whatever, and I told him if he could wash himself up, I'd find him a job. And I'll be damned, he looked totally different the next day. Damn. I tried and failed to find out anything about him. So I decided to take him at face value. I judge him from what he did as an employee. It's a good way to look at it, I feel. And aside from the occasional sudden escapade, he's been as loyal as loyal gets. I return the favor in kind, covering his ass from time to time. Sometimes literally, what the fuck? What, what, what are these situations, boss? I need to take a drink. What surprises me is that you took him in so easily. I can take care of myself, and I always kept an eye on him. And besides, after the whole Robert thing, I couldn't ignore someone that desperate so easily. I see. You made the bar more lively yourself, you know? How so? Well, with the regulars, you've earned a course. Like that blonde titty hacker. I can't remember her name. Alma? I was gonna say Armitage. She's a nice girl, you know? I don't think she's young enough to be called a girl. Says the girl who's eternally 17. In any case, she's really lovely. When you hear her speak of her family, she speaks with such love. Her face just brightens up. It makes me kind of jealous that she has such a close relationship with them, to be honest. You have bad relations with your family? Not bad, but I'm not exactly close to anyone aside from my mom, dad, and aunt. But back to Alma, I'm really hoping she finds a nice guy to settle with. I mean, she's so bent into finding one. I can't help but want her to succeed. Ah, I, I see. There's also that sex worker robot girl. Ah, Dorothy. She intrigues me, though. I've seen lots of sex workers over the years, and she seems pretty giddy. It's not that she likes her job, but rather she takes to it with such childish excitement. I've kind of noticed that too, but then again, Lilum can be weird. You think? Lilum operate in some really foreign logic. I mean, they don't really share our fear of mortality. Even if their bodies are destroyed, their minds are already backed up in the collective source. If they lose an arm, they can reattach it or replace it. Depending on the circumstances, they might not even feel pain at all. It's not like they haven't attained human-like emotions like fear or love, but they are different. Like a different culture, if you must. Hmm, I didn't see it that way. Aside from that, Dorothy's a DFC-72. It's a social interactions model or something. Lilum get positive reinforcement straight from their bodies if they're fulfilling their main purpose, so... I'm guessing she gets a built-in push or whenever she's in a meaningful or challenging social interaction. Crack a new one after that. Interesting. 
The name Lilum is a bit weird, though. Is it? You'd expect them to be called bots or dolls, but Lilum doesn't convey the image of automatons. <laughs> Just a tip, bots and dolls are considered slurs by them. Bot is akin to calling them... I, you know, look, you can read it, alright, like... I'm not, I'm not comfortable with this word. I apologize. It's not, like, it's not my deal. And doll is like calling them fake. Thanks for the advice. That aside, do you know why they're called Lilum? As far as I know, because they all come from a bigger AI called Lilith. And Lilum are Lilith's offspring in Jewish folklore. I didn't know that, actually. Didn't know that. Ooh, cool. Hey, speaking of names, why don't you like being called by your full name? I have no idea what you're talking about. Don't act stupid. Back when you first transferred, I called you Julianne and you almost tore me a new one with your glare. See? Like that! It's no big secret, but it's one of those things that feels silly when you say it out loud. Try me. Well... Did you ever watch Model Warrior Julianne? Not at all, but my little sister's a big fan of the reruns. Back when, I was, back when I was in elementary school, I was a huge fan of the show. I had everything, from the dolls, to the costumes, to the lunchboxes. Didn't help that it was one of those shows that got strapped literally everywhere. I saw a couple of episodes once, they were really nice. It was beyond nice! The show's about a model who can transform into an armor-clad magic knight! She fights demons born from greed and vanity. How the show presented Jules hating her job because it invited enemies, and yet still found solace in trying to be a role model. Hell, the main character wasn't a kid! Julianne was an adult that became younger when transformed. I hate that. That's... I don't... I don't like that one bit. That's freaking me out. I'd say it was a pretty ambitious kids' show. Even by today's standards. Just the fact that her enemies were literally issues dealing with beauty standards of body image? Challenging as fuck. <laughs> Whoa, you got excited there. And that is the problem. Back then I was obsessed with Jules. I sang the songs, dressed like her, I could even recite full chapters. Something tells me you still can. That's... Uh, hold on. This ellipsis is clearly where we take a sip. That's beside the point. It was nice while I was in elementary school, but... Then I went to middle school. Oh, no. And then the bullying start. Oh, no. Mm-mm-mm. I know how this goes. And, what a surprise. Tweens are jackasses. They went out of their way to tease me about the things I did back then. I don't hold it against Jules. I always hold my grudge against those fuck jobs. Sounds rough. You know how most girls worry about their thighs at that age? Do, 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 do they? <laughs> Is that, I hope not, and when you're in middle school? Jesus. I worried about jerk asses singing the theme tune of the show mocking me. Anyway, every time someone calls me Julianne or Jules, I instinctively react negatively. Pavlov would be proud of me. I never talk about it because I find the whole thing too silly in retrospect. I don't... Alright, like, I could see how if you're, if you're in this situation, you can look back and be like, wow, this is a really dumb thing to be upset about. But those are like the most formative years of your life, right? Like, people, people have been bullied for less and develop serious, like, issues because of it. Shocker! You know, I didn't have to think that this would be a, a controversial statement, but apparently in some circles it is, that uh, bullying's not great. Who'd have thought, right? It's a pretty not cool thing to do. Um, yeah, just throwing that one out there. And yet, it affects you even today. There's nothing wrong with it, though. It's actually kind of reasonable. I sure hope so. Come to think of it, what kind of kid were you, boss? When I was a toddler, I was always the kind to fight with kids bigger than me. Yeah, I could see it. Then puberty happened and I became the Merriam-Webster definition of a shallow jerkwad. 
Around the time I turned 16, I realized what an idiot I was and went on to become who I am today. And the less I talk about those years from 12 to 15, the better. Fair enough. So Jill, what kind of guy was your grandpa? He was rough around the edges. The kind of guy that means well, even if he says otherwise. He seemed to have a nice, an, have a soft spot for me though. One moment he was congratulating my dad by berating him a little, and the next he was playing with me. My dad worked a lot and my mom was always traveling, so I spent most of my childhood with him. Can I ask how he died? Out of old age. My dad said his last words were something like, Fucking scientists created talking mannequins, but they still can't let you upload your brain. <laughs> oh my god, this is everyone's grandpa, right? Like, every everyone's grandfather is like this. I know my grandfather. This is something my grandfather would say. 100,000%. He'd be like, fucking big brain losers. You know, they, <laughs> they out here made, you know, living sentient robots, but... They couldn't cure my lung cancer? Like, fuck. <laughs> Side note, my, my my grandfather does not have lung cancer. He's doing very well. To my knowledge, I you know, it's been like a little bit since I've spoken with him. But he he's doing alright. Don't I don't I don't want people, you know, getting concerned over here or anything. My grandfather's fine. It was a jest, a joke. I'm sorry. This is gonna turn out real bad if my grandfather gets lung cancer. I'm just now realizing. A little late now. Hopefully that is not the case. I really, really hope that is not the case. Why the question? I'm curious about you. Really curious. I just realized that even though we see each other almost every day, I know very little about you. Oh. Won't you tell me though? It seems your grandpa's personality rubbed off on you a bit. <laughs> I've heard that one since I was a kid, actually. I mean, like, she literally- we literally just said we spent most of our time with our grandfather, right? Like, your, your personality kind of develops from those that, you know, you spend time around. And especially in those, like, developmental years, right? Like, it can change as you get older, right? And you can start making more conscious efforts to... Like, as you as you get a better perspective, and, like, a bit more introspection, you can kind of guide where you want your personality to go. But when you're a fucking kid, like, you're pretty much just your parents, right? Like, you're you're a small version of your parents, until you kind of, like, you're, you're hitting that point where you, you kind of separate a bit, you know? Kind of that, like, tween to... to like, late tween to teen, early teenage years. Anyway, enough about that. You know, boss, I'm a bit curious about your circle of friends. What kind of people do you have in it? Keep in mind, you're included in this circle too, so any insults you hurl will apply right back to you. Anyways, I have this friend I've known for a long time, a red-headed, glasses-wearing gun nut called Iris. Oh fuck, dude, we're crossing back over into, <laughs> into AI. No! The one you called for the helmet thing? That one. She's managing a BTC bar in Panama right now, if I remember correctly. She's managing a bar too? I got the idea from her, actually. Oh. It's called N1-RV and A, and if you thought this city was it, it, Nirvana, like, let's be real. <laughs> if you thought this city was dangerous, you should see the people she has to deal with there. Piracy ain't nothing to fuck with. Anne means it's an annex to another business. What else does she do there? I think the bar was originally her hotel's bar. She moved the bar to its own building elsewhere and opened Nerve Von Ann B, N1-RV and B in the hotel instead. Weird decision. I believe she said she wanted a place away from the noisy, rich tourists that go to the hotel. So that bar is her woman cave. <laughs> woman cave. That aside, let's see. Friends, friends. I guess there's also my little sister, but that's a given. Oh, there's also my old partner from when I was with the Neo, <laughs> Neo San Francisco Police Force, of course. Good old Lexi. Should give her a call sometime. 
Wait, you were in the what? I've done lots of things, Jill. I spent a short time collaborating with the police force. I've been a wrestler, an MMA fighter, chimney cleaner, lumberjack, pet shop attendant, corporate mascot. Corporate what? I still see my face on websites from time to time. Anyway, aside from you, Gil, my sis, Iris, and Lexi, I guess there's a, there are a lot of people that don't want to see me in harm's way. Mostly because they're the ones that want to hurt me. What about you? I guess I have acquaintances here and there. Back at home in college, I went out a lot. But it felt more like going out was the pleasure rather than the people involved. Aside from you and Gil, my closest friend since moving here is Alma. Oh, and Dorothy. I mean, sure, there's always Foray, but that cat's a hermit that refuses to go out. <laughs> I, I, I would, I desperately want to live in this universe where, where pets are sentient. And like, I fucking, I'm, I'm sitting here, you know, taking a nice sip of my water, recording my video. And my cat busts into my room, walks in and goes, Hey, full on, I'm, I'm going out on the town. <laughs> I'm, I'm heading out for the night. <laughs> See you later. And I'm like, all right, have a good one, mittens. <laughs> Struts out the door. Out of the little, the little cat flap I've installed in the front door. <laughs> oh, I love this. And, you know, he's a cat. Hey, a cat's fine too, you know? Hey boss, what will you do when the bar closes? I don't know. Maybe I'll take a friend's offer of working with her. I was also thinking about going back home and helping with things there. Or maybe going traveling for a while. I see. Oh, but don't worry. Bureaucracy's slow as fuck, so they won't close the bar for quite a while. Better enjoy being there while you can. Yeah. Maybe. Will you be visiting me in whatever bar I end up working in? I have a bone to pick with the guy that supervises the bar I'm planning to get you transferred to. I go there even though I have virtually no reason to. With you there, I'd have something pleasant to look forward to. Um, you're sending me to someone you have problems with? If I have to trust another bar owner, it's certainly him. He's actually a pleasant boss from what I've seen. The fact that he and I have a tendency to go at each other's throats is an unrelated matter. I'll trust you on that one then. Don't worry, maybe I can get you a bracelet made out of wood pieces from the bar's counter or something. Um, we'll see. Hey, I'll tell you what. When the bar closes, let's both take a vacation. Go on a trip, that'll clear your mind a bit. Yeah. Maybe. There we go! Get this nice, lovely shot of Glitch City. Oh, that's snow. For some reason, I thought that was, like, pollution in the air, and I was like, fuck, this place is, this place is fucked. But no, I think that's supposed to be snowfall. <laughs> that, chapter two! Amarga, of course. I don't know. I don't know what that means. I don't. I don't understand. Maybe I'll find out. I didn't get a chapter one bit. What is this? Uh, electricity bill will be sent out on the twenty fourth. Make sure you have the eight thousand dollars needed in five days, bruh. Jill's curious about a Daruma she saw. Anyone will prevent her from being too distracted. What the fuck's a Daruma? Oh well, here's a cracked one. Japanese souvenir that has seen better days. Still has a vintage charm to it. Well, here goes 500 bucks. Could have, you know, saved that. What is the Daruma? Well, it's this thing right here. Oh, boss left the hoodie anyway. Well, I know it's a little early, but I kind of don't want to go to work and have to split it halfway or have this be a fucking two hour episode. So, this will be a short episode. Apologies, but it was a fun one. It's a break from the, the mold the game's been going for so far. I like it. But as always, Thank you for watching. Look down in the description. There's a link there where you can pick up the game for yourself. 
give it a run through, see what's going on, right? Maybe you can drink all the beers in the fucking first two seconds and see what happens. I don't know, or maybe don't drink any. Maybe the conversation changes, I have no fucking clue. I don't know what's going on, I'm just, I just turn the, I just, I just turn the recording on and, and talk, all right? Don't judge me too hard. But anyway, thank you again for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I hope you have a great rest of your day or a great start of your day or whenever you're watching this. And I will see you again next time. Goodbye.